standing in one of my mini greenhouses and today I just wanted to show you guys a really simple design that you can use when you're getting started because it's very cheap, effective and easy to build. So these are often called caterpillar tunnels and they are 12 feet wide so with my beds I can fit four 30 inch beds in there with six inch walkways or you could go a two foot bed with maybe a 10 inch walkway. Um, some people do three beds, some people might even do two, but they're really cheap and simple. So these greenhouses are made with chain link fencing top rail. So it's a one and seven eighths, or no, it's a one and three eighths top rail. It's the thinnest form of galvanized steel you can get for building chain link fences. And this one here is 34 feet long, so it's short, but it used to be 100 feet. When I was on a bigger piece of land, I had it as one tunnel. And um, they it costs about $1,000 to build a 100 foot tunnel. And I've done it cheaper than many other people who build caterpillar tunnels. The main reason I've been able to do it cheaper is for one, I've reduced the steel I use by making my top ridge pole out of two by fours. So, I'll explain that in a second. But the primary components for this are the top rail from chain link fencing. So what you're doing is you're buying 10 foot lengths of top rail. Now there's a male and a, there's a, 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 a male and female end. So the, the, the male end is just slightly tapered and it'll fit into the butt end of another piece of, of post and so the top if you can see here is two of them put together to get the entire rung of the greenhouse it's two 10 foot chain link fence pieces put together and so you can buy these and you can bend them yourself so in my last video or one of my last videos where I talked about poly low tunnels and how to build them check out this image and you can essentially build that same thing out of wood, out of plywood and two by fours to build these same, to bend these same hoops. So it's, it's, it's easy to do and relatively cheap. So the top rail pieces are one and three eighths. The ground posts are one and seven eighths. So what you do is you buy one and seven eighths ground posts that are six feet long and you cut them in half and then you hammer in three foot uh, ground posts. So these are hammered in two feet into the ground and they're about one foot out of the ground. And then your top rail pieces, which are your, your rungs, they will fit into there and then you just put a bolt into that hoop to set it. So essentially all you're doing is you're measuring out your area. Um, most people put their rungs four feet apart. So you're, you know, you're measuring out your perfect square. Use the um, A squared plus B squared equals C squared to get your perfect square. And then you're hammering in ground posts every four feet. And then from there, you're just putting in your rungs. So you get your steel one and three eighths pieces after they're bent into halves. So you're gonna be bending halves like this, and then you put them together. You put a bolt between them, or you can just use a self-tapping screw. In fact, that's what I did. Just put a self-tapping screw between. And then you're putting in your rungs on your ground posts, and that's the skeleton, which is pretty simple. And then from there, the, the cheap way to make a top ridge pole by using two by fours instead of steel, steel, is now you go through on the top piece and you're going to get a quarter inch drill bit and then drill a hole through the two of them and then you're gonna put a carriage bolt that has the rounded top because you don't want anything rigid or pointy on the top layer of your plastic because that's always gonna rip your plastic. So you drop through a, you could do about a, a one and a half inch carriage bolt or, or, uh, or even a screw you could use and you screw through and just screw into the wood and then that becomes your ridge pole. So actually in this case, I did it the really DIY way where I just, I screwed my quarter inch hole 
through my, my, my rungs put together and then I just dropped in a flathead wood screw that screwed into the wood and then I just, you can see, I just scabbed together this wood for the ridge pole. It's very, very simple. So that's what you do to get your the skeleton up and then from there we'll look at the channel lock of these greenhouses which is the, the most important part to keep the poly connected to it. Okay, so the way the poly is fastened, this is how most greenhouses are um, held down. So this is called channel lock and it's a one inch wide piece of steel and it has these little edges to it and then a piece of wiggle wire, it's called wiggle wire, goes into it. So your poly goes over top of the channel lock and then you take this wire that wiggles into the channel lock and then that is what fastens the poly to the greenhouse. And so on a tunnel like this, which is a short tunnel, I didn't even do channel lock along the whole side. Normally you would, like on the greenhouse I'm building right now and on other ones I've had in the past, anything that's near 50 feet, you would have another type of ridge pole type thing, which could be a two by fours that goes all along the side. You're going to run channel lock along there and see I did it here just to just for the middle part because we just built these really cheap. And then I've got channel lock and wiggle wire in there. So that keeps the poly fastened down this way because if you didn't have channel lock this way, the wind would come in and blow it up and it'd really pull on the ends. But first what you do is you, you channel lock your ends that secures your poly and then you would go and, and secure the sides as well. But again, in this case, I only had to do it on the middle pieces. In fact, only on the front. So here's the other one here and it's the same thing. I've only got channel lock and wiggle wire just in the middle. So we just, because these are such short tunnels, we were able to get away with that. So the roll up sides are really do it yourself. They're just made with the same top rail that we use to bend our rungs. So they're just 10 foot lengths of one and three eighths top rail. And you fasten them together on their male and female ends to run the entire length of the greenhouse. And then you attach the plastic to the, the um, roll up sides with some chunks of pipe. So check this out. So I've cut them in a C shape so that they open up and once I, once your poly is down on the greenhouse, you take your steel and you grab your greenhouse poly, you wrap it around the steel and then you take these little pieces of plastic and you wrap them around. So they're essentially acting like a little holder and then you just take a self-tapping screw once you have them all set up and you just do one screw through it and that keeps it in place. And so that, is, that effectively fastens your plastic to your roll-up sides. My handles for my roll-up sides are just built with a, a it's just a custom rebar um, steel piece that fits into the, the uh, top rail. So I'll just roll it up and show you how it works. So I got a piece of rope here, so that keeps it open. So when I roll it up like this, the whole sides rolls up, so this is your ventilation, right? And so during the summer, when I want to keep these open, I just take my rope. I've got another knot tied here, and so that just holds it open. So it's really simple. Do it yourself. Now my end walls for these are just really, really simple. The steel strapping and two by fours. Build a simple door frame by basically running a piece of wood along the bottom, two by fours, and you're just framing in the end. And then two by four along here to build the side of your door. Steel strapping, just basic strapping that goes around the hoop. So you'd put this on before you do your channel lock because your channel lock is gonna go on the outside of all of it. Strap it in, make yourself a nice square door frame basic hinges, and then, you know, we didn't even use channel lock to put the, the poly in on these ones. It's just so simple. It's just using uh, one by two wood strapping to just 
screw it in. And these greenhouses are far from perfect. There's, they're by no means totally sealed in. And that's because their, their basic function is to just give season extension and overwintering crops a chance to grow. They're uh, they're essentially functioning like a poly low tunnel, but there's more air room in them and we can put tomatoes in them. So you can even see the imperfection in them. But it's again, it's about functionality. It's just it's just simple and it serves the purpose that I can grow cool weather greens in here and have tomatoes in them in the summer. So the bottom piece down there is just a wire that's just wired up like this, just with self-tapping screws and washers. And that's just to have a, a bit of a ground barrier. So we run a wire along the base with a self-tapping screw and a washer, run that wire all along Take a piece of landscape fabric, which is the same Sunbelt landscape fabric that I've used for my beds, for my walkways and my perimeters and all that. Drape it over the wire and then, then go and self-tap screw with washers at each rung to keep it in place. And so that just keeps a ground barrier so that um, you know there's another layer of separation between the outside, especially when the poly is rolled up. It just keeps the greenhouse as its own space so you don't have like, I've got wood chips out there so they're not working their way in, basically. It's not totally necessary, um, especially in this type of greenhouse, but because these are semi-permanent, we, we did that. Um, some people would use maybe a rigid insulation or something like that to keep the ground cold from coming in as much. So I will put a link below for caterpillar tunnels. You can search that. There's um, many different designs out there. The, the, the most common design people are using caterpillar tunnels for are similar to Matt Kofay's in Asheville, North Carolina, who I've interviewed in the past. Uh, you guys can check out his video here. Um, and uh, he didn't even have end walls. They're just using caterpillar tunnels similar to poly low tunnels where they've got the plastic bunched up at the end. They'll use a, um, a T-bar with rope to tie it all in a bunch. So that's a really simple way to do it. They're not even using channel lock on those ones. They're just bolting in carriage bolts along each rung on the bottom and then they're lacing a nylon rope over top to hold the plastic down. So those are really modular and for the purpose of kind of setting up and taking down, you might not even have overwintered crops in those. So because I've got these in a semi-permanent area. I've got a lease on this land. We've built end walls and made them semi-permanent. But the uh, the way with the lace and rope is a way to do it in a very temporary, fast um, setup way. So again, follow those links below. If you guys have found that helpful, please hit the subscribe button right now. Like and share these videos with your friends. And check out my website at theurbanfarmer.co where I've got my workshop, my online course. And you can make a donation to the show if you would like to help me out with making this content. Alright, talk to you soon.